Today we're going to start off with the first couple of legal responses, which um, is the 1.30 a.m. lockouts in the Sydney CBD and King's Cross area, as well as the 10 p.m. forced closing times for bottle shops across New South Wales. But we'll also be looking at tougher sentencing and some of the court cases. So there's three legal responses we're going to be looking at in total. The first one um, is lockouts and forced closing times. That came from this piece of legislation, the Crimes and Other Legislation Amendment Assault and Intoxication Act 2014. It introduced 1.30 a.m. lockouts and 3 a.m. last drinks for the Sydney CBD plus King's Cross. You can see the area here in yellow. Um, one of the controversial aspects of this is not only does it exclude Piermont, which has the current casino, but it also excludes Barangaroo, where a casino is currently under construction. Um, the current Premier, Mike Baird, has actually been criticised quite a bit for that. Some people have nicknamed him uh, Casino Mike um, for that. It is something that's quite high profile for the location of the lockout zones. In addition, it also banned the sale of alcohol from bottle shops across New South Wales after 10pm. This bit is often forgotten. It's not just uh, lockouts for the city and King's Cross. It's also bottle shops across the state have closed now or have to close at 10pm. Now, what is the effectiveness? And here we're going to try and look at both perspectives of has it been effective, has it had mixed effectiveness, or has it been ineffective? And I'm going to show you three different pieces of data to argue each one of those three. So number one, an April 2015 study by uh, the Bureau of Crime Statistics showed that assaults dropped by 32% in King's Cross and 26% across the Sydney CBD. So it measured before the lockout laws and after the lockout laws around the same time of the year, because at different times of the year you do have people going out more or less. And it did find that assaults in that area dropped by between 26 and 32%, depending on where you're looking. In addition, and this is important because some people were concerned that, yes, it might reduce crime in those areas, but it'll just push it out to other areas. Um, the report found that there was no evidence that the laws had shifted violent behavior to other areas such as Bondi, Newtown, or Darling Harbour. There was a slight increase in assaults at Piermont, where the casino is, but this was described as, quote, not statistically significant. In other words, it went up a little bit and that that could just be statistical noise. However, and this is to give the other perspective, the analysis of that data by the Sydney Morning Herald suggested that there was an 18% increase in violent alcohol-related crimes in Newtown 2014. So what they're arguing here is that it did push crime to other areas, in particular here in Newtown, um, and also a 375% increase in Petersham and a 31% increase in crime um, in Glebe. The downside of this particular data, particularly for something like Petersham or Glebe, is I think there were eight assaults in Petersham in 2013 and it increased to something like 15 in 2014. So it was off a very low base compared to, say, hundreds of assaults in the city in King's Cross. So we're looking at hundreds of assaults falling by 30% and eight assaults increasing to 15. Um, the other thing is that this is also somewhere where it does strike me as a bit of data mining, where they just went through until they found numbers that supported the case that assaults had increased in these areas. I personally am, am more willing to trust the government department. This is an independent statistician than the headlines of a newspaper. Now, if we look at the data, the other argument that was made was that assaults were on the downturn. They were on the, sorry, the downward, uh, a downward decline. And you can see that from 2010 through to 2015, the trend is downwards. So one of the arguments was made that, yeah, assaults are down, but they were decreasing uh, over the last couple of years anyway. And that is true. And you've got to differentiate between the downward trend and the change here. And here you can see where the lockout laws were introduced. And you can see that there was immediate shift downward of, of that data. But you did see almost an overnight reduction um, in violence. So you've got to take that into account. It wasn't as big as the overall reduction. Some of that was just the natural decrease over time. But the data does suggest that there was a decrease in violence in the CBD and King's Cross. Um, so here we see before lockouts and forced closing times and after, and there was... Um, a noticeable decrease. Now, let's go beyond the decrease in violence. There was other impacts, and you've had two major arguments against this. Number one 
is that it's an infringement on the personal liberty of individuals who've done nothing wrong. And number two, that it's caused significant economic damage to the King's Cross area. So we're going to have a look at both of those individually. The first one, a variety of key Sydney live music and performance venues, cultural organizations, artists, and music industry stakeholders, known as the Keep Sydney Open campaign. You can see on the bottom right uh, a picture of one of the marches they had, I think it was a couple of months ago, earlier this year. Some of you guys may have uh, remember seeing that in the news. They've argued that lockouts unfairly penalise law-abiding citizens for the actions of a minority of violent individuals. They say, we've done nothing wrong, we're being penalised unfairly, we're being punished for the actions of others who are violent. Go after them, don't go after us. So that's their argument, that it's an infringement on their liberties. Number two, you've had 35 King's Cross businesses who've sought compensation due to the adverse economic impact on the King's Cross area. And they argue that that is what forced their closure. So these are 35 King's Cross businesses that have closed down. Uh, Dave Evans, who you see on the bottom left there in the middle, uh, he's the owner of the Hugo's Lounge nightclub, or was because it's now shut down. He said that there'd been a 60% drop in trade and an 80% drop in customers to the King's Cross area following the passage of the New South Wales government's legislation. So again, here you're seeing two um, arguments against the lockouts being effective. One, it's an infringement on, the, on individual's liberty. Two, uh, it's a cost, economic cost, not just to the businesses, but the employees um, who live around there. 